Hello, guys. <coughs> so I was just eating some crisps there. Um, could you comment your name so I can take the red star? Because at the moment, I can't see any names, so um, it might just be me today. Anybody out there? Cool. Good, good. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay, register. Um, okay, so we got Jake, <clears throat> Molly. Grace, Jasmine. Jack, I can't take kills off for some reason. Um, and Jolie, can't take kills off for some reason. Not sure why. Um, my register only had Jake, Molly, Grace, and Jasmine on it today. So something weird's going on with you guys, but I wouldn't worry too much. Um, it should just update. But, yeah. Okay. Um, so our yeah, plan today is to do some integration revisions. So we're going to start off by going over, real quickly, going over the um, different techniques within integration, and then I thought we'd try some challenging mixed questions. So um, first one to look at is the uh, recognition integrals. this out of the way so the ones that you again let's say recognize um there's three of these there's the if you spot it, it's the integral of a derivative times a function power n the derivative over a function or the derivative of e to a function so these three cases Other ones that you need to be able to spot, and um, the reason they exist is because of the chain rule. So in each case, you try a different solution. So for the first one, you would try f of x, the n plus one. For the second one, you try to learn f of x, and the third one, you try e to the f of x. Now, the reason that those work is, like I said, because of the chain rule. So if you imagine differentiating the first one here. If you differentiate this, the chain rule says, I want to put more brackets in there, really. Uh, the chain rule says you differentiate the inside, so f will become f dash. And if we differentiate the outside, we get n plus 1 down the bottom, which I haven't written in either of these because it's just a number that we're going to tweak. And the power goes from n minus n plus 1, take 1 from that to get and so because of the chain rule, this and this are linked together through calculus. For this one, if you differentiate this, learn of something, you get 1 over function. So that goes on the bottom. And the inside, f of x goes to f dash x, which goes on the top. And the last one, um, e to the x would go to e to the, or e to the f of x would go to e to the f of x, and the inside would differentiate to give you f dash x. So that's where all these three come from. Um, You've got to memorize them and you've got to be able to spot them, but that's that's the gist of those ones. Um, the other integrals that you can do just by looking at are the what we call the standard integrals. So some of these are in the formula booklet, and there's some that you're expected to remember. I won't spend long on this because these are the ones that are. I'm pretty sure you guys should be all right with by now. So um, x to the n goes to x to the n plus one over n plus 1, sine integrates to minus cos, cos integrates to sine, 
<coughs> 10 squared, no. Uh, 6 squared goes to 10. Cosec squared goes to minus cup. Sec 10, or sec x 10x, let's not be too lazy with this. Sec x 10x goes to sec x. Um, cosec x cot x goes to cosec x. Um, there's a few others in the formula book as well. I won't give you those ones because they're just things you look up in the book. e to the x goes to e to the x. 1 over x goes to ln x. Uh, a to the x goes to a to the x over ln a. So things like that, the standard integrals, they should be pretty, pretty easy. And normally we'll have to apply the chain rule to those. Okay, the other major ones then are substitution and by parts. So substitution. Remember we're trying to make a u equals or an x equals substitute to get rid of the hard bit of the question. So for example, if we were integrating 2x root x take 2, I would choose a substitute as u equals x take 2, which will convert this bit of the equation into something a lot easier. It'll turn that into root u. We can then convert the first bit, 2x, by finding x equals u plus 2. So that'll be 2x. That'll turn into 2u plus 4 times root u. And then you've got an easy integral that you can do. That's the idea. We're always trying to get rid of the bit that makes it difficult. <clears throat> and there's often quite a few choices you can have for these as well. Okay, one type of um, substitution that's always a bit trickier is the trig substitutions. I'll show you one of these. To be able to get good at spotting these, you've got to remember the trig identities in your head, though. So, for example, if we're trying to integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared. <coughs> now, the reason I know this is trig is because of the whole 1 plus on the bottom, 1 plus something squared. It could equally be 1, one minus x squared. Same idea. These are going to be trig substitution. Trig substitute. <clears throat> In the first one, I want to think of a trig identity that's 1 plus something squared equals something else. So if I have a quick think about that. Um, <clears throat> I know that 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. Oops, wrote it in the wrong place. 1 plus tan squared. Sec squared. So what, and we could also use 1 plus cot is um, cosec squared. Same, same idea. And what we can do with this is we can say, okay, well, if we let x equal tan in this first question, This equation will become <coughs> 1 over 1 plus tan squared u. So I could write tan squared there. 1 plus tan squared we already said is sec squared. So this becomes 1 over sec squared u, which then turns into cos squared u. And then we've got an easy integral to do. Similar idea with this one, the one on the right. So it's a bit messy today. Um, this one here. True identity we could use is, well, we know... 1 minus sine squared is cos squared. So I could say x equals sine u. So this will turn into 1 minus sine squared u, which is 1 over cos squared u, which turns into sec squared u. And then again, we've got something nice and easy to integrate. So those trig substitutions can be useful. Obviously, you need to find dx du first, and that will have implications as well. But you can kind of spot when it's going to be a trig substitution based on the denominator of these, um, these equations. So that's uh, substitution nice and quickly. Uh, last one, last main method is by parts. And for it to be by parts, you're looking for a product of two things that are not both trig. If they're both trig, you're looking for a trig identity instead. <clears throat> and the by parts formula is u dv dx 
a equals uv minus integral of v du dx. And the whole point of biparts is uh, the u term never gets integrated. So u integral of u goes to u times integral of du. So it gets differentiated and that gets integrated, but u itself is never integrated. dv dx, yep, that's integrated to get v. It's actually integrated again here, but u on its own is never integrated. <coughs> so it's useful because um, a couple of situations it's useful. If you've got something like x squared times anything, so I'm sine x or x squared uh, e to the x, x squared, then x. So that's a different example, but um, the first two there, if you make u x squared, we can see we differentiate u. So u here will be x squared, here will be x squared, here will be an x term which has made our integral one step easier to solve. And obviously the sign is never gonna, sign will just change from sign to cos, sign to cos, sign to cos. But we can start whittling down the integral by making u x, because it gets differentiated, we lose a power. If we do it again, we lose another power. Why can't you use it on two trig functions? Yeah, um, if you use it on two trig functions, Elizabeth, you would have trig normally um, integrates to give you more trig. And the whole point of biparts is it works by reducing one part of your integral until you've got one bit left. <clears throat> so we can see with this one, after the first integral, we'll be left with x times something like x cos x. We can then use biparts again. That x is going to become a 1, and we'll integrate the cos x and get a sine x. So we can see this will stop after two repetitions. If they were both trig, so sine x and tan x, if you integrate sine, or if you chose u as sine, you differentiate sine and you'd get cos. Cool. So then your answer would have cos over here and tan over here. And you're basically in the same boat where you started. So we haven't reduced anything. The whole point of biparts is it tries to reduce something each go. And when you've reduced your integral, it then becomes easy. So after a few biparts iterations, you're left with something that's just simple to integrate. Whereas if they're both trig, Let's keep going. Uh, reduction, um, eh, un unlikely. It's more of a further maths topic. Um, I really just showed it to you guys as an extra, <coughs> just so you knew how how um, how to do things that do go around in cycles. You can use reduction on them. But yeah, I don't think it will come up in the exam. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's by parts. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. And we'll just get stuck into some questions because. Some of you already know all this stuff. So I'll just real quick go over the different types of trig integral. So um, product of trig, you're either going to use the sum product rule if the angles are different. Uh, you might use the sine double angle. if angles are the same, or use an identity to simplify. <coughs> it's almost always the way you do it. There's a few rare cases where you could use substitution on a product of trig, <coughs> but they are likely to tell you uh, before if that's the case. So that's how we do trig types. Um, some product rule rarely comes up as well. That's if you've got two trigs and the angles are different. It's really easy to spot because you've got two different sine, sine 2x um, times cos 20x. You know, there's no rule you can use to combine those. So you need, well, well there is, is the some product rule. Um, but there's nothing else you can do with it. Okay, um, and if you've got sine cubed, we're going to split that into sine times sine squared, turn the sine squared into a double angle for cos, and then do it that way. And that's how we also do sine and cos squared, is we use the cos double angle. So sine double angle is when you've got product of two trig where the angles are the same. Cos double angle is when you've got sine squared or cos squared. We need to integrate those. Cool. All right. Um, then also you've got partial fractions, but I'm not going to go into that because I think there's one that we're going to end up doing during the lecture.
Cool. Anyone got any questions on integration before we kind of jump in some questions? Are there any other bits people want me to um, talk about in a bit more detail? Nope, let's just go for it. So, <clears throat> um, you can see I did this this morning with my other group. I think we got through the first 10 this morning. Um, I've gone a bit quicker though through the first part, so I'd like to see if you guys can get. Most of these finished off today would be nice. Um, <clears throat> so there are quite a lot. So we're going to be looking at these integrals. Some of them are pretty tricky. They, do, they are mixed, so they do test um, a lot of different integration skills. So um, there's eight there on the screen. I think I gave my group this morning 15 minutes to do those eight. I think. We'll see how you guys get on 15, though. Um, 15 minutes. Could you comment your answers when you get them? If you need help, comment, and I'll give you some hints as to what kind of integration each one is. Um, but yeah, see how you uh, see how you get on with those ones. So I'll give you 10 minutes. Did I say 10? What's fair here? Um, I reckon 15. I reckon that's what, how long it'll take you. So 15, if you do finish early, say you finished, and maybe we'll um, go through them a bit sooner. But yeah, let's try 15 minutes. Please comment if you need help, and please comment your answers as you're going so I can keep track on where people are. Cool. All right, timer starts now.
All right, how are we doing, guys? Do you want some more time, or are we happy to start going for it now? Um, let me know. I can give you another couple minutes if you need it. I'd rather you try all these rather than just watch me do them. But uh, give me a comment. We'll see. No one's posted any answers, so I am kind of <laughs> uh, kind of dubious about going through them straight away. But uh. Um, hmm. A few more minutes. Yeah. Uh, four, four minutes off the top of my head. Um, we'll see how we'll go for it after four. So four minutes. Do comment some answers, guys, uh, just so I can see you all doing stuff. But uh, there we go. Four minutes on the clock, starting now.
Cool. All right, let's do this then. So, um, first one. I just need to move my keyboard out the way. First one, uh, cos straight, easy integral. Cos integrates to sine. Angle stays the same. Then cos of the reverse chain rule, we need to divide by 3. So 1 third sine. 3x take 1. Second one, e to the 1 minus x. Well, e goes to the same thing. So we're going to get e to the 1 minus x. And then because of the chain rule, because of the reverse chain rule, <coughs> if we differentiated that, we'd have a minus down the front. We don't want that. So we're going to write minus out the front. So that will times the minus we'd get and cancel out. 4 should be... How do you mean? <laughs> Grace, what do you mean? <laughs> four minutes should be nine minutes, or do you mean question four? I'll let, we'll wait and see. Um, next one, we've got a um, differential on the top of the bottom almost. So you, you'd be forgiven for thinking this is f dash x over fx. It's close, but because you've got that squared there, it's actually not that. How you would do this one is um, rewrite it as 2x plus 1 times by x squared plus x. Take 1, the power minus 2. Oh, cool. I can't see any of your answers anyway, Grace. So that's interesting. Has anybody else commented answers? Because I. Um, I don't actually have many comments, so interesting. Um, yeah, so we get to there. So it is a function derivative one, but the derivative is next to it, the function is on top. So to do this one, it's a um, f dash x, fx to the minus 2. We're going to try fx to the minus 1. So we're going to try x squared plus x, take 1 to the minus 1. If we differentiate this, we'd get 2x plus 1 out the front, which we have. But we'd also get that minus 1 out the front as well. So we need to introduce a minus. So that should be your answer to that one. All right. Next one is cos 2x. Um, I'm going to do that up here just to save a bit of space, I guess. So integral of cos 2x, cos integrates to sine, so we get sine 2x, and then the 2 needs to come out the front, so we get half sine 2x. So it's very similar to question 1, question 1 and 4. <clears throat> question 8 is a tedious uh, partial fractions question, so just let me get some space for this one. So partial fractions, uh, let's write it as a over x minus 1 squared. Because we've got repeated root, we need b over x minus 1 as well. And c over x plus 2. So we'll multiply through and get um, 4x take 1 is a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 1 plus 2 plus c times x minus 1 all squared. So if we let x equal 1, first of all, we're going to get 3 equals 3a, therefore a is 1. Then we can let x equal minus 2, which will give me minus 9 equals um, 9c, so therefore c is minus 1. If I let x equal 0, as my last one, get minus 1 equals 2a, which is just going to be 2. Um, minus 2b um, then plus c which is minus 1 so if we rearrange this we're going to get um, b is 0 I've done something wrong here let me do that again I don't think b was 0 so uh, x equals 0 gives me minus 1 on this side equals 2a a is 1 so that's 2 uh, minus 1 times 2 is minus 2b. And then for c, we're going to get minus 1 squared, which is just plus c, so minus 1. 
Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, if we really just add one to each side, we get zero. Take two, we get minus two. Take to minus two B. Therefore, B is also one. So A is one. Let's write all this in. Um, B, C. A is one. B is one. B is minus one. That's what we're trying to integrate. So all the power of all the power of one denominators are going to be ln, and the power of two denominator we've got to do differently. So we're integrating this. So we write this as x minus one to the power minus two. That's one over x take one minus one over x plus two. That's what we need to do. Uh, the power is going to go up for the first term. So we get x take one to the power minus one. We need a minus out the front of that. We're going to get plus ln x take one minus ln plus 2 and we can use log rules on that to get minus 1 over x take 1 plus log x minus 1 over x plus 2 that should be your solution all right next one is by parts so we've got learn and we've got x cubed so we're going to use the whole um x equals or u equals late which decides the order of choice for what we make u and we're going to use learn because when we differentiate learn we get one over x which is going to help solve our integral a lot faster so u is ln x dv dx is x cubed u dash is one over x v is x to the four over four so we put it all together we get uv x to the four over four Minus the oops u v so um x four to four ln x take away the integral of x to the four over four x which will give me x to the three so that's going to go up to x to the four again over sixteen plus c. So that's question nine one. Uh, question ten is another partial fractions question, which is great. Um, so denominator for this one, we're going to factorize it two x x and minus seven. So it's going to be one and three. Let's have minus three minus one. So those are my two fractions. We get a over two x take one plus b over x take 3 equals what we're going to get to in a minute. So um, cross multiply. And we get 5 equals a x take 3 plus b 2x take 1. Let x equal 3. And we will get 5 equals 5b. So therefore b is 1. And let x equal one half, so we get five equals half. Take three is going to be minus two point five a, so therefore a is minus two. Yeah, so that's good. Let's get minus two and one. So there's my fractions that we need to integrate. So let's do the integral. So we're going to get a log for both of these. So we get minus 2 learn 2x take 1. Um, yep, that's it. Plus learn x minus 3. And if you want to simplify those, um, we'd have to use the... Wait, do we need to do that? No, we don't need that at all, do we? That's what we should get. So we get ln of x take 3 over 2x take 1, and that's it. The reason uh, we didn't need that too is because if you differentiate ln 2x minus 1, the 2 comes out anyway. Otherwise, I'd have had 4 on top. Okay, so that's 10th one. Last one, 11, is a function derivative question. So recognition. Um, 
because the power x squared plus 2x, the derivative of that is 2x plus 2, which is a factor of x plus 1. So we need to use function derivative. So uh, we're going to try e to the x squared plus 2x. If we differentiate that, then like I said, we get 2x plus 2 e to the x squared plus 2x, which is twice too big. So we need to half our answer. That's that's it done. Ta -da. Cool. Hopefully that wasn't too quick, guys, but you can go back and slow that down or pause it if you do need to. Um, going to move on because I'd like to get through as many of these today as we can. So there's another page worth here. Uh, we're going to try these six and we might try the other two at the end. So a few interesting ones here. Um, we'll try 10 more minutes. I comment if you think that's going to be unrealistic, and I will extend it to 15 if we need to. Cool. So timer starts uh, now. And, um, uh, there it is. Cool. All right. Um, so first one, learn of 2x. Um, we're going to need to use by parts on this one as well. So u equals ln 2x dv dx equals 1. And uh, u dash will be 2 over 2x, which is the same as 1 over x. Um, and v will go to x. So if we put all that together, we're going to get uh, x ln 2x minus the integral of v du dx, which is the integral of 1. So we get x ln 2x take away x. Cool. Um, so that's the first one. Question 6. Uh, we've got x over x squared minus 1 to the power 3. Um, so here you need to spot, if you differentiate 2x x squared, you'd get 2x, which should come out on top. But obviously, we don't have that. We've got x, and also we've got power 3 on the bottom. So we need to bring it all up on the same level. So we will get x, x squared minus 1 to the power minus 3. Uh, then we're going to try x squared take 1 to the minus 2. Uh, differentiate that, so we get 2x come out the front. If, if we check it down here in green, 2x would come out the front. We'd get minus 2 come out the front as well, x squared minus 1 to the minus 3. Uh, of course, we don't want either of those two, so we need to divide this by 4, so we're going to get a quarter of that. Also we need to get rid of the minus sign, so minus a quarter x, x squared minus 1. Cool. Um, question 7, root 2x minus 3. So we can write this as 2x minus 3 to the half. And to integrate that, we're going to need to put the power up to 3 over 2. So 2x minus 3 to the 3 over 2. Uh, we need to take out a factor of a half there. And um, we're going to need to divide by 3 over 2. So that's going to be 2 thirds there. Cross those out, we get 1 third. 2x take 3 to the 3 over 2. Cool. Um, question 12, which looks pretty horrible. But again, it's a function derivative question. So you've got f dash x over f of x. 
Um, and the way we can spot that sine differentiates to cos, which is there. Cos differentiates to sine. The only problem is this, the, the sine is different. So we're going to try learn of sine x plus cos x because it's power 1 on the bottom, as you can see there, power 1. Uh, sine we differentiate to cos. So if we differentiate this quickly, we get cos x. Cos we differentiate to minus sine, so minus sine x all over sine x plus cos x there. Um, you can see we've almost got that, but our signs are different, so we need to put a minus sign in front of that one. Cool. Right, two left to do. Uh, so we've got x squared sine 2x dx. Uh, so we, this is a by parts. So we're going to say u is x squared dx sine 2x. So u dash is 2x. V is going to be the integral of sine 2x. Sine integrates to minus cos, so we get minus a half cos x. Put it all together. U dv dx. Sorry, uv minus v du dx. So x squared minus x squared over 2 cos 2x minus the integral of uh, uv minus v u dx is going to be minus plus in this case x cos 2x badly drawn x so we actually need to do it and again we need to do a whole nother step on this one so we're going to say u is x v dash is cos 2x u dash is 1 v is a half cos integrates to sine 2x put the whole thing together minus x squared over 2 cos 2x um, plus uv x over 2 sine 2x minus the integral of v du dx well du dx is 1 v is a half sine 2x sine integrates to minus cos so we're going to get plus cos 2x and we're going to need a quarter Oop, out the front there so that should be our integral there cool All right last one is sine cubed and sine cubed is a tricky one i think we've done we did this once before in class i mentioned it at the beginning a bit today all right so sine cubed Uh, integrate this one so we're going to get um, we're going to turn it into sine 2x times sine squared 2x x uh, we're going the way we do this then we're going to change the sine squared into cos so we get sine 2x times by 1 minus cos squared 2x expand it so we get sine 2x minus sine 2x cos squared 2x and now we do the integral um, so the first one is just going to go sine integrates to minus cos so we get minus a half cos 2x the second bit is a function derivative so we've got function to the power 2 fx all squared times f dash x so we're going to try fx cubed which is going to be cos cubed 2x um, cos integrates to give sine but we need a minus so put a minus there we also need to get rid of the 2 so we need a half there as well and when we're integrating we're differentiating something cubed we'd get free so we also need to get rid of a Three, I think that sounds it. Um, yep, so we're going to need one over six there. Cool. Anybody got any questions? Um, I actually raced through it today, and that's that took me the whole whole 90 minutes this morning. Um, yeah, I think we've got time, so I will give you guys another couple questions. But if there's any questions now, please ask them, otherwise, we'll move on to um. Oh, are you going to get four done? I think we'll try two more for today because I don't want to get too far ahead. So we'll do 
15 and 16, which are over there. Get rid of the other two. So if you guys could do these, that would be... So two questions give you six minutes to try those. Um, we'll see how you do. If you need more time, we can, we can do that. Cool, six minutes starting from now.
Right, do you guys want more time, or is that enough? It felt quite quick, that, but, um... Yeah. Up to you guys. What do you reckon? More time, or no? I'll give you five seconds to comment, otherwise... Should we just do it? Get over with? Because uh, that's all I want to do for today, and then, um... Friday, we'll look at the, the rest of these. So, first one here, we've got... Let's just do it. So, we got one over root... 3x take 8 from 8 to 24 and um, the way we do this is we write it as 3x take 8 to the minus a half 8 24 um, and power goes up by 1 uh, so we're going to get 3x take 8 to the power half. Divide by the new power, so we're going to get divide by half is times by 2, and we need to divide by the 3 there, so that's going to be our answer. Then we need to put in 24 and 8. So we get 2 thirds, 3x minus 8, what we're we talking about. 3 lots of 24. Minus 8 to the power half, minus uh, 2 thirds of 3 lots of 8, minus 8 to the power half. So, on my calculator, um, 3 times 24, take 8, square rooted, 2 seconds guys, sorry the door's just being knocked, um, you've got 2 more minutes to try and finish this off. Sorry about that, guys. Just had some post delivered. Um, where were we? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we were rooting. I don't remember now. Let's do it again. So, we got 3 times 24. Take 8, and we're square rooting all of that. So, that's a root. Root 64, which is indeed 8. Uh, 8 times 2 over 3 is going to be 16 over 3. Take away. 3 times 8 take 8 is giving me 16. Root 16 is 4 times 2 is 16. Ah, that right? That, no, that cannot be right. What am I talking about? What times it by 2? Um, 4 times 2 is 8. <laughs> Not 16. So we get 8 over, over 3 for the first one. Um, the second one is a lun one because it's power one on the bottom. So we got one over three x take eight, eight twenty four dx leaves me with lun three x take eight. The line there. We need to uh, take out a third. Let me put in twenty four. And 8. So we're going to get 1 third, learn. Sixty-four minus 1 third, learn. 16. Which we can say is a third, learn. 64 over 16. Which is a third, learn. Four. Cool. Right. Uh, that was pretty good. Well, that was pretty fast today, guys. I don't know how you did. Hopefully, that was right. Um, Friday, we will finish off the rest of these questions. And next week, we're going to look at area between two curves, area between different things, integration. Um, then I thought, I don't know. If you guys have got any other topics that you really want to look at, let me know. Otherwise, maybe, maybe differentiation, maybe vectors again. 
Uh, but let me know if there's any specific topics you want to look at after integration. I think we've got three weeks left together after this week. So that's uh, what, nine more lessons. So we could potentially cover nine topics, more likely cover maybe five more topics after that. Um, but let me know any other topics that you want me to cover um, after integration. Um, yeah, and make sure you still finish off the assignments. It'd be good if you could all get all the assignments done by half term so you've at least finished everything this year. Cool, any other questions guys? Because that will be it for today otherwise. Cool, all right, cheers guys. I will see you on Friday.